All right, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Before we get started with today's programming, uh, the other day I released a video talking about um, what I think about all this situation and what I'm going through throughout this situation, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going through, but the, the feedback to that video has just been uh, so positive, so cool. Um, thank you guys for the constant support through this, this really tough time. Um, if you guys did not see the video, I mean, I was, I, I basically came out and just said what was on my mind about this whole situation. Uh, it's driving me to be depressed a lot and I, I'm trying to come up with the best content possible for you guys. And I'm trying to, to get guests on the show. So, so it's not, so it's not a complete, um, w you know, waste of time of things and, and trying to give you guys amazing content to keep coming back every week to tune into. And I really appreciate you guys, um, you know, not only just commenting on the video, but coming to me, DMing me, messaging me if you guys have my number. And it was it was really kind and sweet of you guys to do that, to check up on me, to see how I'm doing. Um, I've said it time and time before, this, this whole situation sucks. I, there's not much to do. There's not m anywhere to go. It just, it's, it's, it's really, it's really putting a burden on life. Uh, this is all new to everyone. No one has, in, in our time, has, has lived through something like this. And, um... This is just a, a big thing we're all trying to get through together. So, um, going forward from that video on, um, we're gonna try to produce and release some of the best content possible we can on this channel, um, and I will do whatever I can do to just get that out there for you guys. So, I want to thank you guys so much, and I want to welcome you guys to the Minus Horror Podcast, the podcast where we talk all things horror with our guest Jonathan from the Hotline. Welcome to the Madhouse! <laughs> it's time to get your fucking horror on, live from their dumpy little studio in beautiful Norwalk, California. It's the Mindless Horror Podcast with Sammy and Anthony. Hey, hey, what's up, man? Yep. So, um, first and foremost, thank you guys real quick just for letting me say that in the beginning. I mean, I just had to throw that out there um, because I've never had a choice. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're fired, Sammy. I've been looking for ways to get fired. Here You're it is. Fired. <laughs> hey, no, man. I, I honestly appreciate you starting off with that because it is a very strange time that we're living through here, gentlemen. It's uh. Once in a lifetime, and I hope it stays once in a lifetime. But uh, yeah, man, this is a perfect time to uh, try the best you can to get an emotional, uh, or I'm sorry, a creative outlet going uh, yeah. to kind of overcome the uh, the emotional blues of being locked indoors all day. But uh, yeah. hey, man, we're here, we're healthy, we're safe, and uh, haunts on its way. So yeah, things are looking up. <laughs> things are looking up, man. So today on the on the podcast, before we go any further with this podcast i i have to bring this up because i know i already know with with stuff like this in the reddit chats which i don't read because i don't like negativity or anything but i already know people all over social media and everything they, they're gonna go and and complain about spoilers and stuff what we're talking about today is a leaked hhn lineup for 2020 and this is not confirmed this is not official this is this was sent to us uh, through the Haunt community. I mean, uh, it's just been up there. It's been out there on social media. Um, for one, all three of us do not condone, of course, the leaking or, or any of this. We, we are just the news passers. All we're doing is we're seeing the news that was received to us, and we're just passing down the information to you guys. And to Take, comment on it. And yeah. to comment on it. Yes. Yeah. It's so, your own opinion. You can disagree. Yes. <laughs> so take this leak lineup with a very tiny grain of salt because this – I mean – and I was talking to my other YouTube buddies. It looks like some of these some of these properties already might be changing because Warner Brothers are involved with two of them, and they couldn't get their hands on them. So take this lineup with a very tiny grain of salt because nothing's been confirmed yet. They haven't even announced the first maze yet. The only thing we know about Halloween Horror Nights this year is The Walking Dead is coming back after the closure of the full-time attraction uh, this uh. past this past year. Um, <laughs> they said they're going to be coming, returning. So that's the only thing we know about Halloween Horror Nights 2020 so far. 
Um, so this is your full blown potential spoiler warning in case you don't want the event ruined for you. But if you guys are, have made it this far, um, we're gonna we're just gonna talk about what's on this map uh, and what our thoughts are about this uh, leaked lineup so far. So I'm gonna start off with the mazes first, and we'll go down and, and we'll talk about each one. Um, first and foremost, the um, Sabrina Netflix TV show is on here. Um, what do you guys think about that? Who wants you to go, go first, Sam? Okay, cool. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, honestly, so that you know, it's the first one on our list today. I'm not very familiar with the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina at all. I don't really watch the show, although I know that it's got kind of a loyal following. So it's I, it seems like a good choice just because it's you know it's Halloweeny, it's spooky, it's witches, it's um, I'm sure there's a lot of opportunities for great costumes um, and set pieces from the show, but uh, it's interesting. It's interesting uh, right off the bat with the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, not your typical horror franchise, and I know that people love to com- kind of complain about that, uh, but it it could be fun. That's the thing with oh, all of these like. Last year when people were like, eh, Ghostbusters, it's not a horror movie. Yeah, bro, but you had a good time, didn't you? So shut I up. loved it. <laughs> I defended Ghostbusters going into this event. I was like, this maze is going to be the underdog of the event. It's going to be a fun maze. Yeah. And I was so glad I stuck with my statement because literally every time we went to this maze, we had a good time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I don't know how I feel about Sabrina. I think it's another attempt to be the Stranger Things of the event. Um, to be that kind of pop culture thing to bring people into the gates. I mean, I know there's a couple other attempts to really bring people to the gates with kind of like crowd pleasing, uh, you know, mazes. But I really feel like that's where Sabrina's kind of going to fit in there. I feel like if it does come to the event, it's going to be kind of overwhelming. I think too, it's like fan base, so it may be cool. But like, I don't know where the scare is going to come. Obviously, I haven't seen the show, so I could be completely wrong. But I heard it's kind of like satanic witchy and i'm kind of like mm, not the alley i want to be going up so, <laughs> um, so i mean that's kind of why i haven't watched the show but uh if it's anything like the 90s sabrina uh, <laughs> sammy's all in <laughs> yeah oh, Listen, completely if they have in. an uh, an animatronic talking cat i'm already sold like just have sold. That's the maze. You just walk in, and it's him like doing one-liners like he used to in the '90s show. <laughs> yeah, um, good old Salem. So, as far as me, I mean, I, I've I've been meaning to check this out because I've heard it's a more darker and and it has a really good like creatures and stuff in this in this show, which I you know I'm I'm a huge fan of just creatures in general. And um, from what I've heard about this show, I've heard that it's more like a Riverdale style show. Yeah, it's it does dramatic. seem that way. Yeah. Isn't she like supposed to be tied into the Archie universe or something like that? That sounds that. familiar. That sounds familiar. I think I think I've heard that that she's tied into the Archie universe. Let me so look it up. this would be a, a great opportunity for um and being Warner Brothers is the you know sole producer behind it, it only makes sense, of course, with Riverdale being on the CW. Um uh, yeah. and, and that which would make a great opportunity for the two shows to uh cross over. I don't watch any of the shows, but um yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how this would work out as a maze, per se, because I, uh, I I don't know. I just, I feel like with Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, again, I've never seen the show, so I don't, I don't even, uh, going into this, I don't, I don't have much to talk about it with it. But I think with, with Sabrina, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to do, maybe. Um... Just because, you know, you got it's like a teenage girl, just, you know, she's a witch and stuff, and she's dis- discovering all this, you know, new all these new creatures and stuff. But I, I think what would save that maze ultimately would all end up being the creatures. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that would be the ultimate highlight of that maze. Uh, regardless, I mean, I usually do a thing every year where um, I watch everything involving HHN, so I would probably sit down and binge watch the show real quick just to see what I'm getting into. And so I got have an idea of what to expect in this maze. Um, if, if they do do it, I'll be very disappointed. I'd rather they go back and give us what we deserve, a great Stranger Things Chapter 3, or they're going to do anything on Netflix. Oh, but yeah. Outside of the other one we're going to talk about a little bit later. Yeah, Forget. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still waiting for a, a Chapter 3 maze on its own, too, because there's so much that they could have done with Chapter 3. Yep. 
so much, and they condense it to like a scene at the end. Come on, yeah. bro. Yeah. It wasn't even like a good scene, you know. I mean, I, no. I would say that was the best thing in that whole maze because like the the quality of the production in that part, but it still wasn't good. I mean, and I I don't understand why they didn't do chapter three or season you know season three of Stranger Things this year. It would have yeah. set up perfectly for season four next year, and it yeah. would have been kind of like a good in between because we may not get uh, season four until like later next year if that you know what i mean yeah. because of yeah. all production being stopped on everything so uh i agree with you there sammy i think we're, we're they're they're holding back on us with season three of stranger things and i i say we we earned it you know we deserve it yeah <laughs> yeah uh, and that was the biggest thing i mean i i remember I, I remember going to the event uh and it was sammy's first time going to the event and i had already went through the stranger things maze and and like i Sammy had not gone through it, so I had to go through it again with him just because I know Sammy was very excited to, to see how that was. He's a, he's a big fan of the show, much like me. And uh, walking out of that, that maze and that event, I, I don't think after that we went through that ever again, huh? <laughs> it wasn't worth two hours. No, no it wasn't. No, it wasn't worth 15 minutes, bro. Like, no. <laughs> if it was a five-minute just walk in, maybe. Yeah, yeah. 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 But – I mean, I would always feel so bad for the people waiting in line for like two, three hours, and then like to come out with that soul disappointment of that maze. Like, I would have been pissed if I had, and I was pissed because I actually had to wait that long. I mean, the, at least for the first time when I went, I had front of the line, and then when I went with Sammy, I don't think we waited that long. I think we waited like thirty minutes, right? Yeah, thirty or forty-five. Because that was like the first thing we hit because we knew that was going to be the mo- most insane. Yeah, yeah, and see, that's why they have to listen to our show so that we can take the brunt of it and let them know, hey, don't wait for this one. <laughs> yeah, yes. exactly. You know, <laughs> um, but nonetheless, with Sabrina, we'll see. Um, yeah. Usually, th- and this has just been kind of a tracking record of HHN. Usually, the first year they do something, it's really good, and then when they come back for a second year, it's not very good. Um, a couple examples of that: uh, American Horror Story was one of them. The third year they did Insidious, I wasn't a fan of that maze. Um, Stranger Things uh, Season 2, another one of them. Um, so we'll see. Um, yeah. you, usually HHN has a, a bad time doing a sequel. I don't know why. <laughs> but uh, we'll see. Um, of course, The Walking Dead attraction has been confirmed already, uh, uh... making its return. I the only thing I, I you know listen the only thing I know a lot of fans don't like the Walking Dead attraction. My thing with this though is if you're gonna bring it back to HHN this year, let's change it up with current stuff. Yes, yes. Because I want to walk in this maze next year. The first thing I see is a group of people lined up on the floor and Negan killing Glenn. Oh, That's the first thing I want to see walking oh, in. Oh, that, that would be cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That is the first thing I want to see in that maze if it comes back. And then for it to catch up with, of course, what's going on with the Whispers and, and you know, the whole war with the, the, the Saviors and, and Hilltop and, and um, Alexandria and all that. So I, I would love to see, you know, the, some of the wars that happened. And then, of course, I would love to see some Whispers, which would be really cool. Um, shout out to my boy Kevin. He actually worked the maze at uh, Walking Dead for the first uh, couple of years, I believe. And uh, that was really cool. Um, so... I'm not even going to bother with Walking Dead. Everybody kind of already knows that one's coming. So let's move on to the next one, which was an amazing scare zone last year. I think this scare zone actually took the entire event. Uh, All Hallows Evil. What are your guys' thoughts on this one? I think it's pretty perfect, honestly. Uh, Like, All Hallows Evil, the scare zone last year was already basically a maze anyways. Like, it was more of a maze than it was a scare zone. So I think it's the perfect transition, like Holidays in Hell, to go from a really cool scare zone to a fully developed maze. I think it's a great choice. Um, I've been reading online that people wanted, instead, they wanted a, uh, what's it called? The uh, Spirits and Demons of the East maze. Yeah. I could, I, I mean, that is going to be more expensive to build at this point because All Hallows Evo is, is basically like no. already <laughs> built. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and plus, uh, they already did uh spirits and demons and it was called shadowlands and it was awesome and it was at knots so yep. uh <laughs> it's, it's already been done uh <laughs> but yeah all hallows evil i think uh, it is it's a great choice man i think it's perfect yeah well i just before we go on you think dying by the sword the last year was awesome i didn't say that i i said it was an awesome maze 
They could have spiced it up a little bit more in the last year, but it was still very a beautiful maze. Okay. I agree. <laughs> I didn't go through it the years prior, so I don't know, but this last year, hmm, there was a lot better mazes than not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> But uh, I, I agree that I think All Hallows Evil lends itself to being a maze. Yeah. I, I do. I also can side with it. If they were going to make another Scare Zone happen, it would be Spirits and Demons of the East because that would be super fun. Yeah. Um, that, that had a lot. That, that four legged Still Walker is terrifying. Oh, yeah. One of the scariest things, man. And it's yeah. always so intimidating to be close to it, too. Just look up at it and be like, oh, yeah. You're pretty yeah. scary, dude. <laughs> yeah, and because, because you know, I, I do have, I think Universal Scare Zone, because of the already set design that's already there, it's kind of hard to really lend yourself to be, like, super involved in it. Yeah. But Wait, it hold on. Maze, Let me go back for a second. Were you talking about the four-legged stilt walker? Yeah. yeah. That was at uh, Spirits and Demons of the East. Yeah, no, I know. I said that. Okay. <laughs> I thought because we're talking about all Hall's evil here, and I was a little confused hey, on that. Sammy's an expert, man. He he knows Bro. what's up now. <laughs> He's a haunt expert now. He goes Bro, one I'm year and he's an expert, huh? <laughs> I've been going since 2011, and I'm freaking nothing. <laughs> no, yeah, no, but yeah. So like, that's why I think Spirits and Demons would, would be a lot of fun if yeah. they did do that. If they're gonna do that, is it? But all Hall's evil is gonna be fun too. Um, yeah. And they really dive into really you know the old school halloween because i think people crave that yeah. every year um, oh yeah definitely um and, and especially it early be... halloween when it was terrifying <laughs> 1920s <laughs> halloween it seems to me that with with the scare zones that usually go in the back lot it's almost like it's a test to see if they would perform well as mazes that definitely seems to be the trend thus far yeah i mean Holidays in Hell was the first one to really do it, and you know a lot of people enjoyed that maze. It was, or and and they also enjoyed the scare zone as well. Yeah. But the maze when they when they revamped it and and they gave it an actual theming and and original music by Figure, which Figure is no stranger to the event. He's been here I think like three years now total. Um, when they gave uh, Figure the opportunity to build this uh, this this whole soundtrack. I mean, it, it was it was a phenomenal maze. I mean, yeah. I think still to this day, my favorite part of that maze is the Halloween section because that music, that song goes freaking hard, man. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> it just, I, I was straight in there like, oh, all right, I can feel this, man. Let's do this. <laughs> it's not even a maze anymore. This is a freaking dance party. Let's go. <laughs> um, if pumpkin comes out of the darkness out of nowhere. You're like, mm, yep, it's a maze again. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think All Hell is Evil will translate well into a um into a maze that the scare zone looked beautiful and I can't wait to hear more of a, of a story uh translated into a maze. Um yeah. I remember at Midsummer Scream last year when um I think he had already announced Holidays in Hell. Yeah, because that was the first yeah. maze announcement, one of the first maze announcements last year. Um he announced it actually at Mid uh, Monster Palooza, so that was the second one, I'm sorry. Um but I remember when he announced that, and then at Monster Palooza, or at um, yeah, Monster Palooza, he showed a little bit of uh, like sculpt designs of what the masks will look like, and and what this overall theming will look like, and I was just blown away by that. So, um, if he can do the same with All Hallows Evil, especially with them slowly transitioning to do more original mazes at this event, which I am so for, um, because Curse of Pandora's Box last year was just an amazing maze. Yeah, that was a lot and, of fun. Um. Yeah, so if and if he wants to do All Hallows Evil, I'm all for it, man. If this is uh, part of the lineup this year, I cannot wait. Count me in. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm right there with you, brother. Yep, yep. All right. One movie I have not seen, but I'm a little iffy about, Gremlins. What do you guys think about Gremlins? You've never seen Gremlins, dude? <laughs> no. Oh, bro, you got to rent that mess. This this is the time, man. This is the perfect time to go through your movie list. <laughs> yeah, Gremlins, no, dude. This so, is the time. Here's the deal. It, it's uh, you know, they play it on ABC during like October, right? So yeah. it's obviously it's not like a gory, crazy, super scary horror movie, but it's a lot of fun. This one kind of falls into the same category as like Ghostbusters, right? Where it, it's not your traditional horror franchise, but a Gremlins maze that would be dope, man. I could see them using a lot of puppets in it. 
I can see them recreating some of the the, the fun sets from the uh, from the movie itself. Um, Gremlins would be a lot of fun, and it would be a good opportunity for some scares that would be a little differently. I kind of predict that it'll be less Gremlin scares unless they have people in like full Gremlin costumes, <laughs> like six foot tall <laughs> Gremlins, which I don't think they'll do. But I think it's going to be a lot of like victims, right? Like uh, yeah. coming out with a Gremlin on them or something like that. Uh, now it it would be fun. Now let okay. me show you. Let me tell you a perfect example of why mazes to movies to mazes work for me because I walked in one year and they did an American Werewolf in London maze. Yeah. Watched the movie prior to that for the first time ever and was not a fan of it at first, right? Oh. So hang with me here. Then I walked through the maze, and that really shaped and changed the way I look at that movie today. Yeah. Because right after I walked through that maze, I instantly fell in love with that movie. Funny enough, I hadn't seen the movie until after I went through the maze. So I came in completely unfamiliar with it. And so I really liked the maze and then I really liked the movie. So it's yeah. it's kind of like your your experience but just kind of opposite. I mean, That's and then the I mean the makeup in that movie for the for the time it came oh, out was just man. fabulous. Absolutely. It was flawless, dude. Heck it was probably yeah. one of the best werewolf movies ever made. Yeah, easily, hands, hands down. down. Sammy, Gremlins, what do you think, man? Uh, I think, yeah, I think it's a Ghostbusters uh, attempt at it. Yeah. Um, I, I can see it going either way. I can see Gremlins happening again, or happening, while we're doing Ghostbusters 2. I don't think you can have both coexist at the event, um, unfortunately, because I think they're going to be, it's going to be too playful. But I, I do agree, like, a lot of Gremlin kills, a lot of victims, it'll be fun. Um Especially because, like, you'll see the gremlin, you're like, oh, it's kind of cute. And you're like, oh, wait, that's kind of terrifying at the same time. <laughs> well, now, it's funny that you bring up the Gremlins Ghostbusters 2 thing because they did Ghostbusters Killer Clowns last year. Which are two very funny properties. But people are terrified of clowns. Yeah, that's true. That's true, yeah. <laughs> They'll always have that. They'll always be like, um, there's, there's always like a base level of fear for clowns no matter what you do. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. I From what I've seen from Gremlins, it just looks very cheesy to me and it very, I think that's what made that movie though. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Like, yeah. let me warn you right now. It's it's pretty cheesy. It's really yeah, corny. Yeah. And I think that's but what it's he, a lot of fun. Yeah. That's why it has the cult following it has because exactly. of the cheesiness and because of the, the comedy to it and yeah. stuff. But. I, I don't know, man. I, with Gremlins, right now, I'm not completely 100% on board with it, but I know with mazes like this, um, they usually blow me away. Now, talking about, now already talking about the adventure, the chilling adventures of Sabrina and, and Gremlins, these are actually two Warner Brothers properties that I've heard uh, from other sources that pulled out of the event. Mm. So, um, this is no. This is no shock to us before because Warner Brothers tends to do this a lot with with HHN, especially with Warner Brothers uh, supposedly coming back this year to uh, revamp and re and bring back um, Horror Made Here, which was I really hope they do, man. That yeah. was fun. I'm, that was I'm a good time. every day. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it was probably my favorite haunt event that year, um, just for the sole purpose of the Batman maze. Oh you know, man, I mean, that alone, based off the Arkham universe from the video games, which yeah. I freaking played through religiously um and then walking through seeing some of the most iconic villains the joker makeup looks so fucking beautiful and, and i mean i don't know if it was the same guy every night but whoever was there the night that i went had the mark hamill voice down. oh yeah and dude it, like it was like stepping ever. right into the the video game it was so beautiful i loved it one of my favorite memories going through that maze was i was actually wearing it, it was actually two. It was the Joker that's in that's doing the trial in the beginning, yeah. and then the Joker at the end that takes you to the exit of the maze. Um, when I got in, I was wearing uh, on my vest a Robin logo. <laughs> and uh, Joker saw that immediately. He goes, "All right, well, I was gonna let you guys all out, but that guy's wearing a, a, a logo that I don't like, so you guys are all gonna get thrown in." <laughs> and I thought that was hilarious. I, I love how much they actually knew their knowledge going yeah. into that maze. Yeah. Um, and the second time is uh, the, the, the Joker, he saw me again with the Robin logo, and he goes, oh, you, you, so you, you know who that is? He goes, you know, I've killed one of them right before with a crowbar, and I immediately yelled, oh, my God, I get that reference. And he looked at me like shocked. He was like, really? Not many people do. So the next time I, – I think I went through that maze like three or four times that night. And the next <laughs> time I went through, the guy – the same guy remembered me, had a crowbar with him, 
showed me the crowbar and he, he let me take a picture with him. It was nice. probably one of the best fanboy moments I've had in my life. Nice. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I saw – this is why I hope they bring back Hormate here, especially Dude, it, with a lot of properties that it can have. I would love to see, like, absolutely. a supernatural ones too. If I may, real quick. So uh, did you guys do the Exorcist experience that they had there, the Exorcist, the Forbidden yes. Screening? Yes. That was incredible. But what really made the event for me was walking past a lake – and seeing Jason, Jason coming come out of the fucking lake, man, like, <laughs> dude. So let me talk about my. I didn't get to see that, but I saw. Oh. I, I, I didn't get to. Like, I guess the night uh, I went, they weren't doing that, but oh, I did man. see him on the dock, and that still gave me chills. Dude, absolutely. Like, just Jason plus Lake equals. Oh my god, this is awesome. And that, it that's what very, really. Oh. It looked very similar to Crystal Lake. It really did. It was pretty creepy, man. So that yeah. was like the moment for me where I was like, oh, my God. In a few years, Horror Made Here may be like very big competition. It's going to be for if Horror If it keeps Nights, going, for it'll not. be the premier haunt event. Absolutely. Yeah. They, they got to do. They got to tweak a couple of things here and there. But outside of that, if, if they really apply themselves, they'll come in hot, man, and they'll start kicking ass, dude. Definitely. I mean, and I'll give it to them. They don't have a big theme park or anything no. to work with. So what they're no. working with, hats off to you guys, man. Absolutely. That is not an easy accomplishment, especially probably having to tear that down every night Ooh. for their studio tour and for filming purposes. I mean, hats off to them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, but going back to the whole Warner Brothers. Wait, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump on this one again real quick on the Hornet here. And I think what also helps is – um, they actually utilized like their set pieces. Yeah, yeah. Like you were actually walking through sets. Like not not to knock Universal, but a lot of their stuff, it's like okay, you're in a maze. Yeah. But I feel like with Horror Made Here, at least at least on the all the videos I watched, you were actually like in the movie. Like you were walking through rooms that you would see in the movie. Yeah. Not kind of like someone built them, but like actual like rooms that were in the movie which is or, or rooms that have been used in the past in movies that you wouldn't even really know you know what i mean like yeah. uh, i'm pretty sure that a portion of the uh what was it the uh, conjuring experience uh, i think a part of that house was used in true blood uh yeah. so you wouldn't know it unless you like look it up but yeah you're walking through like cinematic history which is pretty cool yeah, yeah. so i mean yeah i mean so going back to gremlins and sabrina uh, from what I've heard, Warner Brothers, and this is another rumor, so this is not confirmed yet. We don't even know what this is. But from what I've been hearing, they pulled out those two properties, and it's looking like maybe a Blumhouse property is going to s- step in. And I've actually heard a speculation that maybe Texas Chainsaw Massacre might be stepping in. Mm. Ooh. So if my boy Leatherface is coming, I'd be genuinely happy about that. <laughs> but Yeah, here's my thing, though, with, with, like, with Leatherface, with Texas Chainsaw. Like, what's cool about this alleged lineup, right, this year is that it's very different. Because we've gotten so many years, and this is no knock on them because they're awesome and their franchises are fun. But we've had year after year of Freddy Krueger, of Jason, of Leatherface. You know what I mean? We've had those time and time again. So that's what kind of got me excited about this lineup was that it was refreshing. However, I'm not going to say no to a Texas Chainsaw (laughs) maze because they're always really cool. (laughs) I would really like to see a Texas... A Texas Chainsaw Maze based off the reboots. Oh, that'd be interesting. Those yeah. are a lot darker, and I love the the backstory that they give us in those mazes. And, yeah. and Leatherface himself was freaking hella terrifying in those yeah. mazes. Yeah, oh yeah. Movies. So, um, and then, of course, a Blumhouse property, and, and, the, and the one that comes to mind right now is uh, is The Invisible Man, so obviously. Bad. Yeah. Um, which was a phenomenal film, in my opinion. It was such a good well put together film yeah um and i was very skeptical about this film going in because i was like eh, i don't know how they're gonna pull this off but we'll see and of course uh when we saw it in theaters i was like okay they kept a lot of the original like him being a a, a you know a scientist and everything and, and, a, and an inventor and all that but they just put their own major twist on it which i loved yeah um, a very psychological twist which you don't get a lot you know it's it's hard to really do that in a horror movie and really keep your audience going with it which i which i love that what they did with this movie um and then another potential property that i don't see the only thing i see working as is a scare zone but i mean they did the first purge so i wouldn't be surprised would be the hunt um, the hunt yeah yeah i mean it's not really scary in that way you know i mean there's nothing really scary about it i mean i guess the only sinister thing about it is a group of rich people bringing in a, a group of poor people just to kill them you know i mean 
I mean, I see that working more as a scare zone than I do a maze. Yeah, that's true. And aside from that, I mean, so they've released a, a couple of movies already, and they have a couple of still in the barrel, which I don't know if they're going to release or not. I mean, like, everything's kind of up in the air right now. But, uh, yeah. you know, Fantasy Island was a movie that they made recently, The Invisible Man, The Hunt. Um, there's a, <laughs> there's apparently like another Purge movie. No Fantasy Island. Um, there's Halloween Kills. So they do definitely have like a good amount of movies to choose from to to make into a maze or an experience. And Blumhouse and Universal have been so tight over the years that I can definitely see this happening for sure. Just not Fantasy Island. Truth or dare reboot. Oh God. <laughs> You were lucky enough to not have to go through that. <laughs> it was horrible. Again, another failed sequel, The Horrors of Blumhouse 2. Horrors of Blumhouse 1 was really good. Horrors of Blumhouse 2 sucked. Is that the one where they had like the like the random devil movie at the end? They did Yeah, no, in... they, yeah. they made a, they 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 did a they did an original off the Blumhouse logo where you see the little Oh, thing. that's what that was. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even see it. I, it never connected. Oh my god. It was supposed yes. to be the, the Blumhouse girl and there was supposed to be like a <laughs> twisted story on that and it was horrible. Well, that's great storytelling cuz I didn't I, know, right? I, I couldn't tell it all. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah, I, so this one's going to be Sammy, one of Sammy's favorites. This one's what Sammy's been wanting to come to the event for a while. The Haunting of Hill House. Yeah, yeah. Another psychological horror that we really enjoyed, and it's a very puzzling show up until the very end when everything starts to connect and, and, yeah. and the, puzzle, the pieces of the puzzle start coming through. Um, all right, go for it, Jonathan. What do you think? Well, what's interesting is that what, what it, at least according to to the the speculation map, is that it's going to be the haunting of Bly Manor. So it's going to be the sequel series, uh, like season two of the Hill House, which I guess now they're kind of giving it the uh, the treatment that American Horror Story did, where it's the same cast returning every season, but yeah. it's a different story, which is interesting to me. It's kind of cool. Um, I kind of wish that they would have stuck to Hill House. Because Hill House was awesome. I loved the series, too. I mean, that's one of those shows that grabs you from the first episode and does not let you go. Wait, um, so your map says the second season? Yeah, it says uh, The Haunting of Bly Manor, yeah. Mine says Hill House, so... Yeah, mine says Hill House, too. Oh, interesting. So, oh. I mean, I, I would see them doing more a Hill House just to get people excited for season two. Yeah. Because that's yeah. what they've done in the past with mazes, but you never know. Well, I think that makes more sense. Uh, maybe I got my wires crossed, but uh, it does seem like Hill House would be the one to do, yeah. um, mostly because it's it's literally um, it, it tells a perfect story from from beginning to end, and it only has like three or four real sets, right? Like the funeral yeah. home, the actual house, and you could do a lot of stuff in each of those. So that would be really cool. I, I would be all for it, man. I'd be so excited for that. That funeral home scene is just terrifying. Ooh, yeah, yeah man. Like, oh. Imagine going to a funeral home in the dark. Oh, no. The lights are on, and then you turn the corner, <laughs> the lights shut off, and I'm just be oh. like, oh. And then if they it's have, like, horrible. you know, the, the, one of those hang, the hanging lady drop down at random times, oh. like, oh, that would be pretty oh. crazy, man. Not to mention the <laughs> jump scare just, in the car. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, oh. I mean, there's so much to choose from in that. So I think if they do move forward with that, perfect it's perfect and, and the facade would look really cool too like if they actually built the house almost now, to scale that would be dope from where it's Even set at the red door oh uh, yeah so from where it's set at as far as maze location this will be where stranger things was at so i'm not expecting a facade no, per se yeah. in the front but maybe when you go in that's one of the first things you see that would be cool. I mean, Lord knows they have enough room in that soundstage to do it. So yeah. that would be really cool. I would love it for like the entire like to cover the entire maze. It's just the it's just the house. Yeah. So it looks like very realistic and stuff. Yeah. And that's the first thing you see when you walk in there. Yeah. I mean, um, so cool. Sammy, what are your thoughts on this? I already know they do this most anticipated maze of 2020 off the bat. No matter what else comes, probably. Uh, it'll be beautiful. The bent neck lady, all the statues, oh, all the statues that can move. Uh, the guy with the top hat, 
The one that looks like the bed in that one scene. Oh, oh man. man. Uh uh. uh what about uh, in the beginning? I mean, you find out later on wrong. why she was doing what she was doing, but what about in the beginning when the mom's just running down the hallway and it's just like <laughs> terrifying? Like, <laughs> watching it in the beginning, you didn't know what was happening, so it was just scary. But then later on in the show, you find out why she was doing what she was doing, and it just made more sense. But going in that for the first time, watching that scene, I was like, he, this guy was, uh, he, he was the one that told me to watch it. And this guy was like, dude, watch this scene. And then you just see the mom charge. I'm like, what the fuck? What is going on? Uh, man, if they can use the technology they used in Origins, too, with, like, the rain. And you're looking out the windows and you see oh, the rain. yeah. Yeah. Uh, Talk about solid John effects. Call me right up there. for maze design because I got ideas. Do, do you guys remember uh, the Crimson Peak maze? Yes. Uh, yeah. It's madness. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, a Hill House maze would be a lot like that, where it's just beautiful on the inside. Because that Crimson oh, yeah. Peak maze was not the scariest, but man, no, was it gorgeous. I will agree, yeah. The scare-wise wasn't good, but the creatures and the interior design of that maze oh. was freaking flawless. Yeah, man. Th those are the kinds of mazes that I wish they could stick around for a while longer. Or like, yeah. just put it up somewhere so I can walk through it real quick. <laughs> yeah. You don't even yeah. have to put... You don't even have to put scare actors. I just want no, to see the no, interior just, design. Yeah, just keep the lights on. You know, keep, clear everyone out. I'll be happy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, just have a couple of like line people throughout. Make sure you're moving. Yeah, you know, exactly. <laughs> uh, Haunted in Hill House, is, I think it's a great idea for HHN because, yeah. like I said, Sammy was the one that told me to watch this show. And that day from when I watched it, I didn't go. I didn't, I didn't stop till it was over. I started yeah. at like 10 o'clock in the morning. We watched it all day. He had left. I didn't end up finishing the show till like 1 or 2 in the morning. Oh, man. And, and Sammy was like, <laughs> I need you to text me when it's done because I want to know what your thoughts were about it. And that was the first thing I did. At, sure enough, at 1 or 2 in the morning, I text him, and he was wide awake. He was probably asleep, but he was awake, and he, he replied back. And, and it was – I think the thing with the show, too, it had a very sad ending. Oh, I mean yeah. – it was such a scary show. I mean, you saw the problems with the family and, and everything, but in the end, everything worked out. It was kind of a show of, of like they were bringing up the past just so they can unite as a family and, and be yeah. one, which kind of worked out for them. So, um, yeah, I, I think this will work very well as a maze. I, I, I think there's a lot of, a lot of uh, content they can work with, and I would love to see what they can bring to life. Absolutely. All right. Sammy's favorite maze was a Jordan Pill original last year. There's speculation yeah. of a Jordan Pill original this year. What does that mean? Are we talking movies or are we talking Jordan Pill's going to be writing a, treat, a treatment of a maze for them at Horror Nights just for Hollywood? You know, it would be really cool to have Jordan Peele do something original for us, like from scratch. I think that would be really awesome, especially given how he's kind of become a master of horror in his own right. You know what I mean? Like it, the, every movie that he's put out has been super compelling. Uh, however, I think if anything, it's going to be more a Candyman maze than an original idea. And it makes yeah. sense because Candyman is slated to come out this year. Um, so it would be kind of the perfect tie in to be like, hey, you know, here's Jordan Peele's movie and here's yep. the maze. You know what I mean? Definitely. Sammy, you being a fan of us last year, I was also a fan of this maze as well. What are your thoughts on a Jordan Peele original? You know, I'm going to have to see Candyman first, though, because I think that I'm on the same page. Uh, it's going to be Candyman. Um, I've seen the original Candyman, the one that came out in like 1986 or whatever. And it was okay. Like I saw it once. Um, <laughs> But I don't know who he's gonna do on this new one. Um, I mean, it'll be cool. not to mention. Let me let me touch in real quick. He's not directing it or writing it. All he's doing is I producing. He's producing it. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know how much hand he has in the actual movie. Whereas, like, his hand in us is very much there, and his hand in Get Out is there because he wrote and directed both of those. So I don't know how Candyman is going to look. So, Definitely. I mean, I'm kind of iffy on that one. It can go either way. So, now that we, we're all speculating candy la uh, Candyland. Candy <laughs> yeah. Well, let's do a Candyland maze, dude, based off the board game. I'm, I'm that, down for that. That would be pretty cool, man. Like a twisted Candyland where yeah, it's, like, dude, taken it's over gonna, by, like... All the candies filled with blood and guts and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm so, down. Murdy, if you're listening, <laughs> Candyman maze. Work on it. You're Candyland. welcome, John. 
<laughs> um, what do you guys think? Uh, you know, we're we're all you know suspecting Candyman as coming to the. But what if? Uh, what what are your guys' thoughts if Jordan Peele were to create an original working with Murdy just for Hollywood? What what would you guys think about that? I mean, I think it would be awesome. I wouldn't know where to start to speculate like a theme or yeah. or yeah. you know what I mean. Like, there's just so much they can choose from. But I think it would be phenomenal. I really think if we don't get Candyman, but we still get something that that is made by Jordan Peele. I mean, I, I'm I'm ready. I'm super ready. Us was yeah. easily the best maze for me last season at Horror Nights in terms of set decoration, in terms of scare, in terms of translation from film to, to maze. It was a 10 out of 10. So I feel like at least it was kind of reported this way. It, it seemed like Jordan Peele had a lot to do with the, the design of the actual maze. Yeah. And uh, if, if that was him, then yeah. Give me another one, <laughs> please. Yeah, give me all the mazes you can because it was perfection. Definitely. Um, considering that I, I think Jordan Peele really dives into the Black African American like culture, I would love to see him maybe do something on like Southern Voodoo or something like that as an original maze, Ooh, like a witch trial New Orleans style kind of maze, huh? Yeah, like Coven. Just yeah, give me, give me Coven. <laughs> Just do another American Horror Story maze with Coven. Come on. <laughs> just dive deep, make it twisted, and uh, we'll have a good time. Yeah, yeah definitely. Just give us again. Just us, us again. again. Let's just do Honestly, us again. I'm down with not, us again. Uh, heck yeah. <laughs> you know? Just let's, us, just, let's do us again. Make sure the car works that hits the, hits the person. Yeah, good. make sure the car works because it only worked one time when I went through that damn maze. Ah. Uh, I'm glad I got to see it at least, but. Let's make sure it works. Yeah, and absolutely. Then let's do some better line control, and it'll be A1. A1. There you go. <laughs> um, I think a Jordan Peele original is a good idea. Yeah, Candyman, of course, is the most speculated thing right now. But I think if if he were to get together with John Murdy and Chris Williams to design yeah. an original maze, um, like much, much like Jonathan said, there's, there's no way to even start to speculate to this one because with Jordan Peele's mind, he can just create anything and it would be exclusive to the event. This wouldn't be the first time, though, that a famous horror director would uh, collab with uh, John Murdy and Chris Williams to design something for Halloween Horror Nights. And, the, uh, and I'm also referring to as um, Eli Roth, the one year in 2016 when he did the Terror Tram, which was right. probably the best Terror Tram that they've ever done with Hollywood Harry and that whole story. Um, so I would not be surprised if Jordan Peele and John Murdy actually start to work on something. Um, but of course the, the number one is going to be Candyman. Um, again with the trailer that came out, it didn't really catch my attention so far. The original one was really good because of the actor who played Candyman. That guy's a fucking legend. And, when you replace that big feature from that film, it's kind of hard to see someone else take up the mantle of Candyman. And it's, it's kind of obvious. There's no, there's no hiding it. We live in an era where everything's being rebooted or, or re, you know, you know, remade or something like that. And, um, you know, it, it's really hard to see new original ideas. It's hard to get uh, new original ideas out there. So, yeah. Uh, I have to see more on Candyman, and I have to actually probably sit in theaters and watch Candyman. Maybe it will blow me away, but we'll see. Um, all right. The last couple years, the last two years, these mazes have been blowing us away. Of course, what I'm referring to as Universal Monsters. Yeah. So on this one, it says The Bride. That's the one I got. Um... What are your guys' thoughts if they were to bring a, a Universal Monsters based around the Bride of Frankenstein? I mean, I would dig it. I, I like anything that they've put out, Universal Monsters, so far. Um, if you guys haven't yet, check out the Universal Monsters maze last year from Orlando. Yeah. Oh, talk about Beautiful. a gorgeous maze. That, that one... That one is like number one for me, but whatever. That's East Coast, West Coast. I would say the only thing that lacked that maze was the music by Slash. If they would have had music by Slash, it would have been dope. And that's why I love our mazes because the music by yeah. Slash really brings that freaking atmosphere to life. So what's interesting though about our Universal uh, Monster Maze is that for those two years in a row, the bride has been laying on a gurney and she's been kind of cut up, like split up. You know what I mean? Like her body is actually. <laughs> physically split up um and they made it a point to do that two years in a row so if it is the bride 
I mean, I'm not saying that they can't because she's been, you know, in pieces for the past two years. But it would be interesting to all of a sudden have her kind of together, right? Yeah. Um, she's an icon. I mean, I'm kind of wearing the shirt right now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, she's a, a total icon, and that's easily one of my favorite uh, Universal classic horror movies. Yeah. However, personally, I would really love to see a creature from the Black Lagoon maze because I think that would be super fun. And also, Murdy has already talked about on Twitter before that they have a design for a costume for the creature of the Black Lagoon. So, um, Bride would be awesome, but Murdy, I'm still waiting on that creature maze, man. Let's make it happen. I've been <laughs> waiting for creature, man. <laughs> I've been waiting for creature. And the teases that we get from the art that's that's painted at the studio yeah. to that tweet that Murdy put out, like, I want a creature maze so bad. Man. Even if... Like, I want a creature maze and an invisible man maze at the same time, too. That'd be and because cool. invisible man had a very small portion in, in um, uh, Universal Monsters the first year. I would also love to see a, a longer Phantom of the Opera maze as well. Ooh, but yeah. uh, I think that's the first time someone's actually really brought that up because I haven't heard that one too much. Um, yeah, Phantom of the Opera also had a very small scene in, in yeah. the, the maze as well. If you, if you looked back at that first maze, it was mostly Frankenstein. Um, Dracula and and the Wolfman. Yeah. Um, of course, like a lot of you know, the Mummy was there, and 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 Invisible Man was there, the Phantom was there, but not nearly as long as the other monsters. True. And then the, going to the second year, we got Frankenstein meets the Wolfman, which was based around the two properties, based around the iconic film. And then going into this year, much like how Jonathan said. The bride has been in both years. We've seen her getting cut up, and then we've seen her in pieces burnt alive. So what is the story with this? I would love to see the story leading up to the bride being built, the bride going out and kind of causing chaos, and then the bride end up being back in the workshop (laughs) post-Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. Yeah, I would too. And what's so funny too about the movie is that you get, like, you know, you get uh, The Bride of Frankenstein. It's the sequel. You get a whole lot of Frankenstein, and literally all the bride does at the end of the movie is she just hisses and screams, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so I think it would be really cool to explore her character a little bit more in, in the form of a maze. I completely agree with you, bro. Definitely. Sammy, thoughts? Thoughts. Um, any universal monster is going to be a great idea, no matter what, I think, because obviously you own them. You ain't got to be yeah. franchising. You got to be franchising. Uh, and people are going to eat it up no matter what. As long as you do a somewhat good job. Yeah. Um, and you uh, get slashed through your music. There you <laughs> go. <laughs> yeah. Proving these the last two years, you know. Uh, I mean, they've both been very beautiful mazes. Uh, but I agree. I think a bride would be cool. I would love to see Creature. Um, you've already dove in deep on Frankenstein and Wolfman. Might, might we say you do a Dracula? Dive in deeper because you've already done the other two big ones. You did, um, but I think I think anything's gonna happen. Anything could happen with that one. You could see Invisible Man, or else you're doing Invisible Man for the Blumhouse. Blum yeah, um, but you can pay homage to him in the Blumhouse one by bringing what you've already done in Universal Monsters in the first. Even time. if I saw an Easter egg of just bandage yeah. wraps sitting on like a table or something, that would be, be fun. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Yeah. Without some glasses and a hat, boom. Yeah, <laughs> which would be cool. Um, but I, I think Bride would be cool because I feel like they're really diving into that side of Universal Monsters, like the Frankenstein alley of it. Yeah. But what I would love for them to do the Mummy or Creature or or Phantom, one of the or Invisible Man, one of the ones they touched a little lightly on, but didn't give them the full love that they deserved. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, uh, I mean Universal Monsters, I can. Uh, I, I would say about – I'm at a 60% right now that uh, some form of a Universal Monsters maze will be at the maze or at the at the event. Um, and the only reason I'm putting it at 60 right now is because we've gotten it two years in a row. They've both been fan favorites of the event back-to-back. Like they've not failed us yet. And it seems like Murdy has long-term plans to uh, – do and design his own original Universal Monster stories, which I am very excited for. So 60% right now is where I'm putting at a probability of this coming to the event, only because um, we don't know for sure yet. So until that gets announced, 
I'm leaving it at 60%, which is still a pretty high percentage of it coming to the event. Oh, yeah. Um, all right. My boy Beetlejuice. Oh, man. This will be the Ghostbusters of the event. Yes. And if it's anything like I had with the experience I had with Beetlejuice last year on the Thursday night 80s throwback, I am genuinely excited for this. Now, if you guys watched one of my HHN, it was my 80s throwback vlog that I did in the beginning of that video where they had the tribute band at down right there in front of the mummy and Jurassic World. Beetlejuice was right there. Another one bites the dust was on by Queen. And the I remember one thing filming going up to Beetlejuice. He like puts his arm around me. We start rocking out and singing to another one bites the dust. I will forever remember that. And that's why Beetlejuice has always been one of my favorites. Not to mention the guy's fucking Michael Keaton, dude. <laughs> it's Batman. <laughs> it's fucking Batman, dude. It's freaking it's the it's the freaking what is it? The vulture, I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah, vulture, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of lots of winged uh oh, and he was also Birdman. Birdman, Birdman. Birdman. <laughs> Academy Award nominated, I think winning. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of yeah. a lot of birds in his life. This guy's a jack of all trades right there. <laughs> but uh Beetlejuice, what do we think about this, guys? Honestly, this would be a dream come true. Uh I I you know, we my, my girlfriend and I talked about it a few years ago. We were like, you know, they got Beetlejuice in the parks. It would be cool if we if they did a Beetlejuice maze. And then we were watching the movie, and we we're like, this would translate to a maze so well. There's so much they can pick and choose from. I would love to walk through the miniature graveyard. Uh, I'd love to walk through the you know, the Department of Dead People, um, especially that funky hallway that they have where it's like all kind of slanted and raked. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's just so much good stuff to choose from in, in terms of like uh, scenery and costumes. I would absolutely die to have this now, maze happen, man. It would be great. Talking about Beetlejuice, did you get to check out I Like Scary Movies? No, I, I didn't get to go last year. We, yeah. we it just ran out of time and never got to it. Both times that it came to L.A., the first time we went, it was it was in a – the building wasn't air-conditioned. But the second time we went, it was beautiful, um, and everything was on ground level. But they had uh, – both times that we went, they had a Beetlejuice exhibit, which was uh, really cool. I know. But what was cool, I, I think maybe the year that we went to all all of us, we went to Horror Made Here, which was last year, right? Or two years ago, I guess now. Two, two years, years ago. ago. Um, they had a Beetlejuice exhibit as part of like the yeah. Warner Brothers, um, like the, the final part of, of the experience. And yeah. they had like costumes. They had set pieces on display. And that was pretty cool, man. I love Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice is just such a fun, uh, uh, silly Halloween property. I think it would be perfect for Horror Nights. Yep. Beetlegeist, man. Beetlegeist. Beetlegeist. <laughs> Beetlegeist. Sammy, what do you think about Beetlejuice? Uh, I, I think it would be a great opportunity for um, Universal to hop on that. Because I feel like it's become sort of mainstream again. Yeah. Um, especially in the horror community. A lot of people are like wanting to see that because a lot of them are growing up you know what i mean and they're like oh that's part of my childhood and it's on broadway now too there's like a well, whole broadway show say, yeah too. yeah they have a whole broadway show people love the broadway show continue to love the broadway show um and so that's good but you 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 mentioned again it's warner brothers so that's the other hard part is does warner brothers so I, it's funny that you bring that up though, because they already let him roam around the park as a character, so they must they must have co-produced that with Warner Brothers. And also, they, they, they had of. Don't forget that they had the Beetlejuice Graveyard Review for years. That was like an actual show yeah. during the day that you could watch. So they own they have to own some sort of rights to Beetlejuice, which is very interesting because, like you said, Sammy, it's you know technically Warner Brothers, but I don't know what the deal is there. But they have some sort of deal. And Beetlejuice is still part of Universal Studios. Yeah, he's still a meet and greet character, and he comes out. He was heavily involved in the '80s nights at Horror Nights. He was actually hosting a couple of nights, so yeah. Yeah. they have to have some, you know, rights to him, or they have to have a, a leasing deal with him for so long. Um, we'll see. Yeah, yeah and, um, and if you know they're running out of money and running out of time, they could just call up I Like Scary Movies and say, "Can we borrow some of your set?" Cause, that's uh, true. <laughs> oh yeah, good set pieces. That yeah. really fun. <laughs> Good artist right there, man. Um, yeah, Beetlejuice, there's a lot to work with. Um, of course, you have Beetlejuice himself. I can imagine him just running around causing a madness throughout the entire maze. Uh, again, going to the graveyard. 
I think one of the best facades would be the Inferno yeah. uh, building with air yeah. conditioning inside. Uh, that would be a great facade for that maze. <laughs> um, uh, and there's a, there's a lot to work with with it. I mean, of course, the ending of the maze could be pretty funny as well. Of course, Beetlejuice sitting in the waiting room. He got, like, number like 9,999,999, and they're only called, like, number two. So... <laughs> Um, there's a lot to work with Beetlejuice and of course if there's a lot of he does a lot of like funny and and spooky looking faces throughout the movie as well yeah. which are really cool so I would love to see how they pull that off the last maze I am not a fan of but knowing me I'll still go through it um, that's Billie Eilish so Anthony this far it seems like nobody's a fan of this <laughs> <laughs> no, there. I bet there's Billy Eilish fans like, oh, it's gonna be an entertaining because it's Billy Eilish. Most of the response I've seen online in the comments and stuff has been negative, man. People do not want Billy Eilish at this event. So let's talk about Billy Eilish, okay? Because I don't know very much of her music other than that one song, "Bad Guy," and the only reason I know that song is because a group called the Interrupters, a ska punk band, covered it and did an amazing cover of it. And yeah, that's they did. Like, that's the only version of that song I listen to because I <laughs> like the interrupters. <laughs> um, but from what I've heard, I guess her her album, I guess it, I think it was her debut album where she looks possessed on the album or whatever. Um, I guess it has a lot of horror references to it or something like that. And I guess that's what would the maze would it would be based off of. Um, and not to mention, she did sign with Universal Music Group, so it's a lot easier for them to just pull that property and, and just do it and make an original maze out of it. However, if you look back at music mazes that we've had in the past, Holidays in Hell was an EDM maze. It works because the music is hype, and, it, and, and then that music was themed around each holiday. Clowns, music by Slash. Again, a score that was produced and and made for that maze and it was made to to have the theming of that maze bring that to life both both universal monsters mazes which again music was made to theme the universal monsters it was made specifically for them um my all-time favorite black sabbath 13 3d <laughs> black sabbath has music that can relate to horror and they proved that at horror nights to deliver like a lot of the greatest and iconic songs that Black Sabbath has and make them into a maze, which worked out perfect. Black Sabbath, they are the godfathers of heavy metal. Heavy metal and horror always go good together. That's just that's just how it is. Um, and then 2011, 2012, Alice Cooper. I mean, his music, it talks nothing but horror. The guy puts on a freaking theatrics when he goes to goes on concert. I've seen the guy in concert, and it's basically a big theatric show, a uh, horror-based show, which is freaking amazing. So going back to Billie Eilish, I feel her music won't translate well into a maze. What do you guys think? It, it, it's interesting because her music is definitely very spooky. Her imagery is very Halloween horror, right? It's uh, If you watch most uh, – you know, some of her music videos are straight-up horror movies, um, I, I'm forgetting the name of the uh, the song, but there's a music video where she's like getting syringed in the back, and she's like floating down a hallway. Um, super, super spooky. Uh, although I will agree with you, Anthony, it doesn't exactly bump like a metal uh, soundtrack would for a maze. However, this would be kind of a cool opportunity, a unique opportunity to have uh, an, an artist produce music for a maze that's a little bit slower that's a little bit uh more suspenseful than you know just hard rock blasting at you yeah uh, i definitely don't see this being a maze based off of her already produced music um because then it's it just cheesy in that way you know what i mean but if she does produce something for the event i think she can pull it off i do think that it would be kind of a, a nice match just because her music is kind of already eerie and if they made an original maze that really played off of that eeriness very well, kept it uh, very dimly lit, kept it kind of open, and, and, and have the scares kind of come at you non-traditionally, I think it might be a lot of fun. But it's going to be interesting, nonetheless, how they're going to adopt this, or I'm sorry, adapt this to a maze at all. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I never thought of it that way of her producing original music. 
my mindset is already thinking that they're just going to use her music that they have in the past from music pieces not. that I've seen in the past yeah. from Alice Cooper and Black Sabbath. I mean, that's all they did was just uh, really m- mess with the audio and then just kind of adapt it to how they wanted to fit in the maze. So, yeah. Sammy, uh, thoughts on Billie Eilish? Um, I think there's only like two songs that translate. You should see me in a crown. Um, and bury a friend. And maybe all the good girls go to hell. But like outside of those songs, she's very like soft and kind of like mellow and really lyrical with yeah. the word. Um, which I mean, some of her lyrics maybe bringing those to life would be kind of fun. But like. If her if her music's playing over as the score, I don't know how that's going to translate. I mean, I, I would like the idea of maybe like her writing original music for a maze. That would be kind of fun and uh, a way once again to pull the masses. Because well, once again, you got to capitalize on what's popular in pop culture sometimes, and that's how you get more people to go. I mean, obviously you want to keep your horror community happy, but also you want to make sure you got good ticket sales. Uh, and people are going to buy your merch and things like that. Because um, you, no matter what you do, the horror community is going to come year after year. Or else you like, completely ostracize them. Um, and so I think that could be the, uh, the attempt with maybe bringing a Billie Eilish in. Yeah. But I, I don't see her music really translating well. Because I listen to her music and I'm a fan of hers. But I'm just like... So, I will say this, even though I'm not a fan of that type of music, I do respect her as an artist. You got you can't you can't not respect her as an artist. She's one of the youngest or she, I think she is the youngest people to win a Grammy, which is incredible. It's yeah, not and bad. not to mention not just one Grammy. She won like 5 Grammys that year. <laughs> yeah, she and, just turned 18. Yeah. Dang. And she's one of the youngest people to she is the youngest person to win a Grammy. She started talk about career... feeling completely useless, man. Eighteen years old and like five Grammys deep. <laughs> wait, wait, yeah. you know what makes you feel more useless is when you watch the Olympics and someone's like fifteen and a half winning gold. Oh man, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but for her to have that accomplishment at eighteen, fresh out of high school, makes this. I think when she started her career, she was still in high school, right? I think yeah. so. Yeah, her going on tour while she was in high school. And then getting out of high school, winning five Grammys, and then going on to becoming this amazing artist as she is, uh, that's incredible. That's awesome. That's really kind of unheard of nowadays, you know? I mean, not a lot of people do that. And, you know, I mean, I'm not a fan of that type of music. I I love metal. I love uh, punk. I love classic rock. Um, on occasion, rap, but uh, the rap I listen to is like a lot of the old, like NWA, old school type of stuff. Um, I like oldies because you know I, I grew up in a Mexican household, and for those who have oldies, just stuck with you all your life, dude. That's just how it is. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I, I just I'm not a fan of her music, but I respect her as an artist because yeah. she, what she's accomplished in her career is unheard of. And um, she continues to keep going. She ke- continues to keep pushing out music. And she's not one to really show off her fame either. Like, she's probably making tons of money. But where you see, if you see where she still lives today, like, it's a normal house. It's she like, lives in her parents' house. Yeah, it's a normal now. house. And she, <laughs> and she, she's, but she's smart to do that because she's ultimately saving money on that. Yeah. And she's, she, she's, 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 um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, Filthy rich. Investing oh, no, her money, <laughs> investing into her future. Like I think her and her brother film record their her songs at her house, doesn't don't they? I'm they they sure recorded the entire they recorded the entire album in her bedroom or his bedroom. Dang. Exactly. Like look five at five Grammys, That's... five Grammys, and they recorded it in a five bedroom. Five Grammys, and it was recorded in a damn bedroom, dude. Like she is one of the most smartest artists I've ever even heard of right now. Because if she's doing that. Uh, imagine how much money she's making, not only just on the tour she just was recently on, but you know, as far as merchandise goes, selling CDs, you know, other ticket sales and stuff. She's probably honestly a millionaire right now. Oh, not even. She's a millionaire. Oh, and, yeah, easily. <laughs> and she is still living with her parents. She's recording her music at her own home. That much money she's saving. I mean, she's really she's not stupid. She's smart. She's a smart girl. She knows what she's doing. She's probably learned from other people, from other artists over the years to like the minute they get success, it's just boom, it's gone. 
she's like, no, what do I need all that for? I'm me yeah. and you know, I have the money. That's nice to have, but you never know if you're going to need it for times exactly like this. Huh, 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 so, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, huh, so yeah. going back to this maze, if, so uh, now I'll rephrase my opinion. If it's based around the music she's already created and they're just going to throw something in there just to kind of throw it in there, I don't think it's a good idea. But if she's going to do something original for the maze and original music and, and everything, I think that's a solid idea. Because not only will that push her as an artist to create new stuff just for that, it will be exclusive to HHN, which will probably get released later on after the event's over. And then it shows how much more talent this girl has. Yeah, now what's interesting, though, is that both uh, Horror Nights Orlando and Horror Nights Hollywood have that on the list, the speculated list, right? Really so Eilish. that leaves the question to me, is it going to be one maze built at both locations, or is each coast going to have its own take on Billie Eilish and her music, right? Maybe she'll just produce a soundtrack, and then each coast can build their own maze, or yeah. maybe they're collaborating on a maze. That would be kind of cool, too, but... I think that's how it will go. She'll she'll produce if if it is original stuff. She'll produce this soundtrack, and usually both coasts do their own maze. Yeah, yeah. which <laughs> thank God for that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's some similarities, but I mean, for the most part, usually East Coast is doing their own thing. Yeah. West Coast is doing their own thing. Um, but yeah, that is all the speculated. Uh, leaked lineup HHN mazes that we have received. Of course, the only show that is slated is the Jabberwockies. Of course. Get them the fuck out of Horror Nights. <laughs> I have a feeling if they leave Horror Nights, Knots is immediately going to pick them up, and then I got to deal with them at fucking Knots. Oh, totally. They totally would. <laughs> I mean, they kind of have a vacancy right now over at the Berry Farm. We don't know what's going to happen a... with the hanging, you know? Like... I know. Very disappointed about the hanging last year, but uh, <laughs> as long as they bring back Puppet Up, I'm fine. And I know oh, Sammy, that's Puppet true. Up. Yeah, Puppet Up was great. Bro, oh, we want to watch it every night. Same. Gonna watch. <laughs> gonna go watch uh, every every show every night. <laughs> All three shows, Sammy. Huh? Sammy will be happily with. That. He would be honestly happy with that. That would make his night. Just, hey, it would be a fun time every night, so I can't blame you, Sammy. Pump it up every night, and then just pop into a scare zone, which we each one. <laughs> I mean, shows. yeah, that sounds like a pretty good time to me. You go to Carnival, you can go to Ghost Town, and you have, you have <laughs> two choices. I can make um, my way to the Hollow. Got to do a little jog to the Hollow and then jog, jog back to the show. <laughs> go. Got to catch that next show real quick. All right, got to go real quick, see everybody on, and then run back. Um, so that is going to do it for this podcast. I want to thank Jonathan from the Hauntline coming on and, and, and doing this. Uh, Jonathan, when can we expect season two of the Hauntline, my friend? Uh, well, I'm uh, currently working on finishing season one right now. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, but honestly, I mean, season two is coming. I can't, I can't give a, a very specific date, but it's coming soon anyways. I've already got a lot of ideas written down. I'm developing things. Um, and also, we're starting to, to make some YouTube content, too. Uh, which, by the way, guys, congratulations on, on all your subscribers, man. That's, oh, that's a huge so much, milestone, brother. dude. It's 900, right? 900, 900 yeah. Ooh, man, that's awesome, dude. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, w season two, I'd say at least before Midsummer Scream is when we'll start it. Definitely. That'd be a good, that'd be a good podcast uh, predicting going into Midsummer Scream and then news after Midsummer Scream. So. Absolutely, yeah. Um, Jonathan, where can they find you on social media if they want to follow you? Well, you can find us on Instagram and at Twitter at the Haunt Line, um, and then we're on a pr pretty much any podcasting platform you want. We're on Spotify, we're on iTunes, we're on, or I guess Apple Podcasts. Sorry, that's the correct term. Yeah. Uh, 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 Google Play, all those things, and then you can find us on YouTube as well yeah. at the Haunt Line as well. Awesome. Well, Jonathan, thank you so much for coming on the show, talking a little HHN with us, getting us ready for this event. Uh, um, yeah. It's looking almost like a solid year, guys. I'm excited. Uh, let's just pray to God that this freaking coronavirus passes over us. Yeah. And we can enjoy haunt season this year. Stay quarantined to save Halloween, man. Absolutely. Hey, wash your hands. You gotta do it. Yeah, you wash your hands. It. Don't touch your face. Yeah. We'll, we'll see each other at haunt. Yep. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for this podcast. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you so much for the constant support. And uh, we will see you guys next time. Peace. Peace. Peace.